more ironic than Pink Comic Sans. Okay, so I forgot to talk about the, the song Pools and my Paramour review. It's because, like, I was sad. That's why I didn't listen to it, and it kind of just reminds me of Tegan and Sarah, and I used to listen to them when I was really sad and, like, you know, 13 to 15 years old, so... Yeah, that's why I didn't really mention it. I know it's a good song. I do enjoy it. Like I said, it's a pretty legit album, After Laughter. It's just I want to clear that up, because I know it's, like, a very reverend, um, you know, praised... Is reverend even the right word? Am I saying words? I haven't had coffee today. But I know it is a very, um, praised song, and I didn't want you to, like, think, oh, Kusk has a bad opinion. Actually, I have a lot of bad opinions, but, um, that's not one of them. So, yeah. Enjoy the video. <laughs> okay, album number three is After Laughter. Oh, boy. This is 80s vibed. I love it. Like, I hated Hard Times at first, like, I hated it so much, but now I'm totally down for it, and I keep listening to Rose Colored Boys, is that what the song's called? I don't know, I keep listening to it, though. Like, honestly, I don't remember names because I'm stupid as fuck, but anyways, basically this album's just so upbeat, and I love it. Basically, talking about the smooth transitions again, like, damn, like, this is fully a do transition going on here. You know, it's very, it kind of reminds me of Gonzo by Foxy Shazam, but less trumpet-y, if you get my drift, and less, you know, psychedelic. That's just what this album reminds me of, I and mean, it has, doesn't have balls on the cover, so I'm pretty psyched, you know? I am actually okay with this album. I love it, and I never thought I would, and honestly, the middle part, you know, forgiveness to pools, like, that's just so, it just hits you, Okay? Fake Happy hit me like a ton of bricks, and, you know, that little, um, middle, middle part is just an emotional whirlwind that you can get sucked into, and I love it so much. Honestly, yeah, I, I it also kind of reminded me of video game music, you know, I was raised off of the Sega Genesis. That sounds really weird, because I'm pretty young. My mom just wanted to introduce me to old video games, and she wanted to introduce me to that system. So yeah, you know, honestly, whenever I hear, like, 16-bit music, like, things that resemble, like, that kind of, you know, style in old-school video game music, I'm just like, I like this. Because of just me, when I was four, trying to play Vector Man or some shit, and can't even pass the le first level, like, I couldn't, but I still enjoyed it. And yeah, does it sound like Vector Man? No, but honestly, whenever, <laughs> whenever I hear like albums that, you know, take on the retro, this well, the Genesis isn't retro, okay? It's like like early '90s, but still, like take on that vibe from like 8-bit, 16-bit. You know what I mean? Music. Like honestly, I just get into it. You know, there's such a retro vibe with this album. I just enjoy it. And some parts did remind me of old, you know, 16-bit music. Sounds weird, but yeah. Anyways, let's see what else did I say about this. Oh yeah, like I jammed out to hard times when I heard it in the, you know, actual context. I think I, no, wait, I said that about Fall Out Boy. But I think I needed context for hard times too to actually fully get it. And once I had that context... I fell in love and it just was such a good start for this album. And when it comes to, um, what's it, No Friend? Like, damn. Like, that just reminds me of No Place's, um, little speaking parts. I don't know who's, who's like, speaking No Friend, but it just reminded me so much of No Place's speaking parts. It was so cool. And I love how that was implemented in a more electronic, boppy album instead of this post-hardcore album. It was just so interesting to hear, and I enjoyed it. Like, honestly, it was so interesting, and the ending was pretty legit. Just, you know, tied in the album. Basically, kind of... I, I thought it did remind me of Future, but it kind of reminds me of Part 2. And honestly, part two is one of my favorite Paramore songs, so yeah, I do like Let the Flames Begin, but I also like part two, so 
deal with it. But yeah, basically, I like this album more than I thought it, I would because I thought it'd be a ripoff of so many things. But honestly, it does not remind me of Mooseblood. It doesn't remind me of Temples. It reminds me more of Foxy Shazam more than anything. And that's honestly really cool because Foxy Shazam is dead. I mean, the band is not the members, but the band is not a thing anymore. So honestly, when things like are reminiscent of old bands that I listen to, I totally like get it and I bop to it. And I was dancing throughout this album. And I was just enjoying it. The vibe is just so cool. And you know it's a less ballsy gonzo, okay? That's all I have to say about this album. And honestly, you should check it out. Because, you know, less ballsy, less trumpety gonzos are what we need in this world. Okay, you know, Paramore, kudos for you to... For, like, you know, coming back after a hard time in your band career where legal issues are involved and all of that fun jazz... You know, you did something good. And honestly, it just offered so much in that sense. It offered nostalgia. It offered, you know, something new that no one else is doing at the moment. It does offer a lot of gonzo, but it offers a lot in general when it comes to, you know, other albums around. So honestly, I'm just so thankful for its existence and I'm totally down with new Paramore. Okay, last is Adornment by Grayscale. Okay, honestly, bless this album. Bless it, okay? Honestly, I wanted to add, have Gusto and Adornment be, like, the first and last so you'd remember it more because, honestly, Motionless and White and Paramore have a lot of, um, credit already. But basically, this album just, I thought it would be a basic-ass pop-punk album when I first listened to it. But it turned out it wasn't. After the second track, I was totally sucked in. And honestly, the single Atlantic was actually a good single. Like, if you don't know this about me, I hate singles. I really do. I can, like, bash them all day. I can figure out what's wrong because it's the only thing I know and I haven't heard it in full context. I haven't heard what I could get lost in. I haven't heard, you know, what it is a piece of. But, you know, I did hear, you know, songs before Atlantic, but honestly, the song did stick out. And with that being said, other songs stuck out, too. Honestly, you know, speaking of the fact that, you know, Patty Walters did, was featured in, um, what's it? Yeah. Come on, done. You know, speaking of him being featured there, you remember Happy Never After? Yeah, that album sucked. And guess what? The singles were the only highlights of that album. When singles are the only good thing from an album, you know, it's just awful. That is like... Good singles are usually a um, sign that an album sucks. I'm not even joking, but with Graveyard Shift, like, I'm sorry for, like, ranting about it. You know, singles weren't even up to par and the album still fell, but honestly, you know, it was still not happy never after. That album was just awful. But anyways, when it comes to this album, I still felt something, but, you know, for um, Beautiful Things, is that the song? Yeah, Beautiful Things. Honestly, Forever Yours came in, and then Beautiful Things did, and honestly, it was just such a nice transition between those two songs. And, you know, Fever Dream also stuck out to me. It's my favorite song off the album. I want this album on vinyl, and I don't care if it has, like, a good single. It has good songs throughout it. Brad, um, yeah, Brad LaPlante from Square One TV and his own channels has recommended me this album. I was talking to him since I was, like, 12, 13 years old, and honestly, like, I loved his content more than Brian Starr's when I was a scene kid, so that says a lot. And I still love his content today, so I think you should totally check it out. But seriously, like, honestly, you know, Fever Dream stuck out to me. Beautiful Things did. Beautiful Things is just such an emotionally hitting song, because Forever Yours is kind of sad and acoustic. But then Beautiful Things comes along and says, hey, there's other shit out there, fam! L look! You know, look, there's, there's stuff in the world, man. You know, honestly, I just enjoy this album a little too much. 
and yeah I just said it was a total bop I honestly think this is contending with lovely little lonely as a summer bop album and that's just something so good to say honestly when I heard the first song I was like damn this is basic pop punk I don't want to listen to it I have enough man overboard in my life can you not but then I listened to the whole entire thing I'm like damn lovely little lonely watch your back fam you're gonna be paired with this album and I'm just gonna listen to you both all summer. So yeah, you know, it's just an album that you can feel stuff towards and still bop at the beach. So yeah, Adornment by Grayscale. Check it out. You won't be like, you know, it, it won't hurt your ears. It has lovely audio sounds to it. You know, if you like pop punk, it just satisfies that need for not basic pop punk. So yeah, and it it really does contend with Lovely Little Lonely to me. I'm sorry. That may offend some people, but I don't care. Excuse me, but seriously. This album's a summer bop. I can't get over it. I'm sorry. I'll end the video. Okay, so this is my overreaction to um, all these albums. I can't do this in a way where I'm serious. It's not even funny. Like, Graveyard Shift's such a joke to me. I'm sorry. Like, the, it just, it just, like, sent me rolling off a dramatic spree. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please tell me your opinions on these things. Uh, fight me in the comments over my opinions because my opinions suck. But anyways, you know, do whatever. I don't care. I'd like to talk to some of you though because you're watching my video and you made it this far and you know, I like making new friends. So yeah, even if you disagree with me, let's be friends and talk about music. But yeah, I hope you did enjoy the video. Uh, and yeah, I don't know what else to say. Sorry if I was a little over dramatic, but yeah, honestly, in order, I do suggest you check out Gusto. Um, well, Gusto by Daisy Bones, Adornment by Grayscale, uh, After Laughter by Paramore, and Graveyard Shift by Motionless and White. At the very end, I'm so sorry. Honestly, I just, I can make a comedy video about that album. It, it's so bad. Maybe I should spend money on it too. <laughs> I need to shut up. But anyways, Peace out, hug a tree, whatever, dude. Don't get stung by a bee, though. That would suck, you know. But be nice to the bees. They're giving you food, fam. Peace out.